Then Youngin went to jail and everything, and he had like a little smoke with my project. Okay. So once he came home from jail, like I pulled him, you know, to the side and everything. And I went hollered at my project just to see what the situation was. And my artist, rest in peace, Tokyo, he was like, it's good. You heard me? So I put him and Tokyo on the song just so the hood could know. What was the name of that song? Uh, UPT. I'm like, bitch, I'm trying to bubble too. I'm smoking on that bubble blue. Push me in trouble. Yeah. Cause right now I'm on the edge, ain't playing. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. But I want to go I want to go back into Louisiana. B.T.Y. Young, and man, like, uh, just, uh, you hear so much about him, you know, far as, he, you know, man, it, that was a great guy, you know, a, a lyricist, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, yeah like, like, let's just tell me a little bit about him, how he even came about. Just give me his history, his rundown. Youngin, oh, for me, Youngin, um, I'm one of the, the homies, question. yeah, mm -hmm. one of the homies took Youngin to, the, I had a studio in my house where me, Mr. Marcelo, and Currency used to record that. So one of my little homies, he brought Youngin through the house, and Youngin spit a verse. It was a beat I was working on. He was like, let me see that. And he one take and I was like, that's your beat. You heard me? He had to be like 15, 14 or something. Like, he was young, young. And he was Get like, mm -hmm. he was Soda Slim reincarnated. Nice. Like, when I heard him, he was like Soda Slim reincarnated. Everything was just real authentic, raw. Nice. Yeah. You feel me? Damn. And how long did, and like, when you work with him that time, but do you keep working with him or does he move on away from that situation? Yeah, so at that point, I was just... I was in my rapping days, like when I started. So we like we separated, but then Youngin went to jail and everything, and he had like a little smoke with my project. Okay. So once he came home from jail, like I pulled him, you know, to the side and everything, and I went hollered at my project just to see what the situation was. And my artist, rest in peace, Tokyo, he was like, "It's good, you heard me." So I put him and Tokyo on the song just so the hood could know. What was the name of that song? Uh, UPT. I'm like, bitch, I'm trying to bubble too. I'm smoking on that bubble blue. Push me in trouble. Yeah. Cause right now I'm on the edge, ain't playing. And that hoe went hard. Yes, indeed. Hmm. And so both of those guys passed away. Yeah. But both of those guys was detrimental to, you know, the youth. They were young. How old was they when they passed away? Shit, both of them had to be, what, 20-something. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was young. Yeah, they was 20-something. I can't even tell you the age. But BT, we... BTY Young and I, I hear rumors that he was gonna sign the cash money and all kind of stuff. Yeah, right? so yeah. after I, you know, I got put Young and under my wing, I had to go do some time. So I got a brother that got a record label in Baton Rouge and he had interest in Young and everything too. So Young and was signed to my brother. Well, he wasn't even signed to my brother. They was just running the gutter. And my brother was doing a situation with cash money. So he swung Young and over there with cash money. Mm -hmm. Wow, so did he, he didn't actually sign the deal. Now he was in the process but he was in the process. Deal, but he come home, you know what I'm saying, to get his business clear at home because he about to go back to Miami. He was yeah, playing in he Miami. Could have go to, yeah, he could have go to Miami. Yeah, and right. they was about to sign a labor deal with Black Balloon and Baton Rouge, and they was going up there and do the um, BBG cash money. Deal. What do you think What do you think cash money could have done with a BTY young Oh, man, it was going to be on fire. How big could it have been? What, what, what sound would you think would have came from something? That New Orleans sound. That whole It was New coming Orleans. back. Mm -hmm. It was coming back, like... For sure, Bird's still where he at, and you know, shout out to Bird. Like, man, that's my cash guy. money ain't never falling off. I'm never. talking about they ain't they never gonna fall off. They reinvented themselves so many times; it's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Time. Nobody Fact. has done that, bro. But right, see, right, that right. youngin was gonna be that BG, that UNLV core. He was gonna be what that cash money was built on. That uptown street shit. You feel yeah. me? Wow. So, how was it when you heard it? Where would you at when you heard the BTY youngin had passed? Man, where was I? I don't think I was in town when youngin got killed. Somebody called you. And yeah, was like, I, I got, I got I the call. Cali. You was in Cali too. So, yeah. and I'm gonna ask you about BTY Young and as well. Like, right, right. how did he? How how did you see him as an artist and just nah, being he, from he, New Orleans? Yeah, beast. What I've been on him. You know, what I'm saying I met him around the time when he uh, when he got out of jail. So okay. uh, I was signed to a label uh, from downtown actually, and uh, I was at the studio and my people brought him over and we was young, and then how old was y'all? Shit. Yeah, I say like 20, I was, shit, I was like 21. Yeah, y'all young, ooh, y'all were gonna, ooh, y'all were gonna yeah, tear something yeah. up. so we I were, wanna so, see y'all. So when I heard yeah. I'm like, oh, homie, a beast, and we clicked, like, we had a lot of shit in concert, we just clicked, but as an artist, like, he had to sit it, like, everybody loved him, like, he, he was a dog with that rapping, you know what I'm saying, and, and everything he talking about, like, he was the, he was the new Slim. Like yeah. everybody was on him, like, he was on his way, like, I was up, when I was up there with Pete, he had called me, like, man, tell Pete I won't fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? He on that whatever movement. Yeah, I'm like, with it. Man, tell Pete Cup, get me. 
Yeah, for so sure. So he yeah. just, I'm I'm so New Orleans, I'm so, this what I'm doing, dedicated law to the labels that came from here, I'm rocking with them no matter what. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I get young in that formula, though. Like, that was a talk. I was like, young gang, if it ain't no beef, go smoke him on a song. If it ain't no blood been shared, go smoke him on a song. And young and hit everything in the city. He went jumped on everybody's song in the city, and he laid it down. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, if you had a buzz in the city, he was giving you a verse and he was coming uh, on wow. your shit. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's hard, that's man. I love I, the story, bro. Like like I said, I hear so much about him. And I just I, I you know, how he died at such a young age mm -hmm. and, and, and but he had so much of a of, of, of impact and influence when it come down to his movement and the people that he affected. Right. He affected a lot of people in a short amount of time, bro. Right. right. That's the, you know it's something real when it when right. you see it like that. Facts. So tell me, um, what would it take to make New Orleans great again? Oh, we great, baby. We great. Ooh. We ain't losing Ooh. that touch. We New Orleans. We ain't losing that when you touch, say make baby. Great, he, she got that from Trump, y'all. <laughs> make America <laughs> no. great again. I know where that came from. No. I heard it. Did y'all heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> no, because when people, when I hear stories about New Orleans and how New Orleans used to be and stuff like that, compared to, they said, you know, after Katrina, it has a lot more, you know, building up and stuff to to do. Right. So that's why I'm trying to figure out, like, when will New Orleans be like yeah, what it'll it used never to be. be? It'll never be what it used to be. You don't think be. so? Nah, it'll uh, never be. It's like we'll never go back to before COVID. Like, it, it seems normal, but shit, COVID, shit. it took two years out of our life, It man. took a lot. It ain't been like, the same since Katrina happened. Yeah, that was she was big. saying, like for sure. It ain't it ain't shaking back after, after Katrina. Katrina it that's spread it, it's the city. World. So that culture went all over all the over. world, mm -hmm. but in the city also. So, you know, you took everybody from uptown and then you spread them all out. Yeah. So there ain't, ain't nobody got their blocks. Like in our area, you know, you got your park, you got your stove, you got everything in your neighborhood where you don't have to leave out your neighborhood. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So that's now they just put people in so many other neighborhoods and that just left the murder rate up higher. Wow, mm -hmm. man. Uh, but that's crazy you, because... Go ahead. No, because when you think about, you know, you said they got spread out, but when we go to New Orleans, you see, we just hear all of the accents and uh, everybody is still there. Right. But y'all know it different, as in, like you said, the projects, you know, everybody is normally be over here, there's people be over here and stuff like that. But visitors coming in, they still love the culture because they can still get that feel. Right, they seeing what they've been seeing. They ain't, they ain't been touched. Right. Like downtown, Bourbon, you, that's what you talk when they come mm -hmm. in the tours, they come in and see that. Mm -hmm. They ain't coming in the hood. They ain't coming, you know, they probably come in some place that they know for food or something like, but they ain't just chilling. They don't see the real. Do y'all ever go to that? What? Bourbon Street? Yeah, I still be out there. Oh, you know, okay. I, be a, I be a tourist in my own city. Nah, that's I'll his thing right there. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.